the cloud. Okay. Well, hello, hello everyone. Natasha and Nakia with the Renault Group. So we are going to go through this buyer's workshop to give you an idea of what it looks like to purchase a home. And we'll talk about some of the dynamics in the market, as well as some of the things that you need to look for when you're a buyer and just also go through the escrow process so you have a clear idea of what, it, of what it's gonna look like on your journey. So we'll go ahead and start. Wonderful, yeah, so welcome you guys. I am the other half of the Renault Group, Nakia. And um, yeah, let's get started. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I guess a little so, bit. Of yeah, who we are. So we are sisters in business, very fortunate and blessed to be working with, um, with each other. We have a great dynamic and I would like to, you know, a lot of people consider us to just be a powerhouse, but we are from a very small town, San Luis Obispo. It's about three hours north of Los Angeles. And um, we've pretty much been out here for nearly two decades. And we've definitely made a name for ourselves out here. So we're not only, you know, we're business partners, but we're also best friends. And, um, you know, we do everything in life together. You know, we were pregnant at the same time. Our kids are um, both five years old, but we've worked extremely tire tirelessly to establish the highest standards for our clients. We do have a lot of market knowledge, global reach. We've established a lot of relationships. We have a lot of marketing expertise. We're very organized, we're extremely efficient, and we have the best communication um, that you could imagine when it comes to working with a team. And so we've closed well over 30 million in real estate, and we definitely do not plan on slowing down anytime soon. So we're looking forward to this journey with you guys. Yay. Okay, next. So uh, I guess I'll take this slide. So why have you decided to buy? And we're just going to kind of stick to this so that we keep this within a good time frame. Um, so purchasing a home is most likely the biggest financial decision that you'll ever make. Um, whether this is your first purchase or you are an experienced buyer, this decision must be made very carefully. So typically, these are some of the questions that people ask when they are selecting um or deciding that they wanna purchase. So are you tired of paying rent? You know, Are you ready to pay your own mortgage and not to your landlord? Have you outgrown your current home? Would you rather live in a different area? Do you wanna shorten your commute to your work? Um, has your income grown? So pretty much just having a clear sense of the reasons for buying will help you choose the right property. And property ownership is an excellent investment, whether you're looking for your dream home, a rental property, or just to expand your investment portfolio. Owning real estate is one of the least risky ways to build equity or to obtain a greater return on your initial investment. Absolutely. So working with you as your buyer's agent. So there's three types of agency relationships between parties in a real estate transaction. You have your seller's agent. They represent the seller. You have the buyer's agent. They represent you as the buyer. Then you also have a dual agency. That's an agent who represents both the seller as well as the buyer. So when you select the Renault Group to assist you in finding and purchasing a home, we become your buyer's agent. Typically, the seller already has an agent representing them who is working for their best interest, not yours as a buyer. You too should also be represented with an agent who will be working on your behalf and looking out for your best interest. And the greatest part of hiring a buyer's agent is that in most cases, there is no cost to you. We are compensated for our services when we successfully close on a home for you. The seller is the one that pays the buyer agent's commission. Yes, that is key. That is key. A lot of people don't know that. So just to kind of give a summary of the market, I don't know, do you want to touch on this? You're really good with market updates. Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, when it comes to what's happening in our real estate market, our housing inventory is very low right now. So our month supply for the month of December of 2022 um, was 2.1 months. So I know we're in the month of January right now, but the data gets updated for the month of January, um, we will have that data come February 1st. So 
From June of 2022 to December of 2022, inventory has been on a steady decline. So we are technically still in a seller's market because our low inventory levels. However, buyers are running the show for the most part. We do have less buyers in the market due to interest rates. However, this week we have seen a decline in interest rates. Um, I will say we've seen that decline because the inflation rate has declined. So we do believe that that's going to be more beneficial for interest rates in the weeks to come. Um, we do think that we will possibly be heading to the 5% range very soon. Um, what's great, though, is, you know, although we do have, you know, interest rates that are around the 6% range, um, many sellers are offering seller credits to assist buyers with either their closing costs or, e or either helping with their interest rate buy down. So there's a program right now that a lot of buyers are utilizing, which is the 2-1 buy down or the 3-2-1 buy down. That's pretty much where you're able to get a discount on your interest rate for up to either two years if you do the 2-1 buy down or for a total of three years if you do the 3-2-1 buy down. Um, you know, many sellers understand that they have to be realistic with their listing prices. So a lot of buyers are, again, they're in a good position in this market. Um, you know, and then when it comes to some people thinking that the market is going to crash, we're going to touch on that in a little bit. But the Great Recession was called great for a reason. You know, it's once a century. So that's a little update. Sounds like a pretty healthy, all in all, sounds like a pretty healthy market for both buyers and sellers. Definitely. And then I can also touch on this as well. So again, today's housing market, it's nothing like 2008. So 2008 was a situation where it was stated loan mortgages that were being offered. So you could come in and um, tell the lender, oh, I make a million dollars, but only made maybe a hundred thousand a year. And you did not have to show proof of that. So in the second half of 2022, there was a dramatic shift in real estate, and it caused many people to, com to make comparisons to the 2008 housing crisis. While there may be a few similarities when looking at key variables now compared to the last housing cycle, there are significant differences. In the latest Real Estate Forecast Summit, Lawrence Yoon, chief economist at the National Association of Realtors, drew the comparisons between today's housing market and the previous cycle. So we'll just look at a few. Um, you know, when it comes to the inventory that was on market, the last housing cycle, we had roughly around 3.8 to 4 million homes. Now we're looking at roughly around 1 to 1.2 million homes. Even with the mortgage delinquency, we had about 10% on the last housing cycle, and this current cycle, we have about 3.6%. Now, let's look at the homes in foreclosure. The last housing cycle, we were around 4.6%, but now we're at less than 1%. We're at 0.6%. So um, it's definitely a lot of differences compared to 2008 and, you know, now. It's a big difference. Definitely. And then another thing, um, again, this is nothing like 2008. So historically, a recession means falling mortgage rates. So during the past six recessions, mortgage rates have fallen. Now, history, we know that it doesn't always repeat itself. We can learn from it. So historical data proves an economic slowdown does not mean prices will fall. In four of the last six recessions, home prices actually appreciated. This goes to show 2008 was not the norm. So in 1980, home prices appreciated by 6.1%. In 1981, home prices appreciated by 3.5%. In 1991, they depreciated by roughly 1.9%. In 2001, appreciated by about 6.6%. 6 2008, as we know, the, the big decline, roughly around 19, almost 20%. And then in 2020, appreciated by 6%. So again, the supply of homes, it is nothing like last time at all. During the housing crash, there was an oversupply of homes for sale. Now, while inventory has increased this year, supply is still low. That means there isn't enough inventory for home prices to come crashing down like they did last time, even though some markets may experience slight declines. That's really good insight. Really good insight. 
And then, you know, rent growth is expected to continue. That's one thing that's always going to happen, especially in LA County, Orange County, I would say just California in general. So if you're a renter debating whether you should continue renting or own, rental prices have been skyrocketing for years. Experts project the cost of renting will continue to exceed the historical average in 2023. That means when you renew your lease, you may have to pay more. That's an uncertainty you don't experience with a fixed rate mortgage. Buying a home with a fixed rate mortgage gives you the opportunity to stabilize your monthly cost. And this just kind of gives you a brief of the, um, the appreciation within rents that has happened from 1988 to 2022. And this gives you a chart of the expected growth. So for 2023, they're forecasting that rents will increase by 6.3% this year. So is that something that you want to continue paying? Great information. So, oh, home, okay. home, home appreciation. Um, so yeah, like Natasha just noted, you know, when you are renting, you're not able to build equity. So although that house or, you know, even that apartment that you may be living in, it's appreciating, the property is appreciating for that owner, for your landlord. And you're pretty much just making payments and making those payments and they're paying down their mortgage. Um, so homes have a history of appreciating. As home prices increase, your home's value increases and your mortgage balance decreases as you continue to make your mortgage payment. You begin to build equity in your home. Equity can be used for more than home renovations and repairs. You can use your home equity for college, consolidating debt, down payment on a secondary home, emergency fund, paying medical bills, funding investments, starting a business, paying for a wedding or other important celebrations. Now, rent is constantly increasing, as Natasha just mentioned, and while you rent, you're not building any equity. You assist your landlord with building equity by paying down their mortgage. Um, so this here kind of just shows home prices appreciated by 60.6% over the last five years. Um, and as we see in California, um, around 40 to 60%. So when you own, that's something to look forward to. Yes, that is amazing. So what is home equity? So equity is the difference between what a home is worth and what's owned, I'm sorry, what's owed on the mortgage loan. To calculate your home equity, you take an estimate of your home's value minus the balance owed on your mortgage loan. So for example, let's say your home's worth 900,000 and you owe 790,000 on your loan. Here's the calculation. So equity, like we said, it equals the value of the home minus the loan balance. So we're gonna take 900,000 and subtract 790 from that 900,000 that would leave you with 110,000 equity. So example of home equity, if a homeowner purchases a home for 900,000 with a 10% down payment covering the remaining um, 810 with a mortgage, the owner has equity of 90,000 in that home automatically. The amount of equity in a home fluctuates over time as more payments are made on the mortgage and market forces impact um, the property's current value. So home equity, very important, can, it can represent more than a mortgage loan being paid off. It is an asset that the homeowners can borrow against to meet important financial needs, such as paying off high cost debt or paying college tuition. So equity, equity, equity. We see that word thrown around all the time, but it's very important. It's key. And it can help with a lot of um, making a lot of different moves. Absolutely. As they say, you know, when you own real estate, that's one of the quickest ways to gaining wealth. Now, timing your purchase is your lease ending soon. Um, this is, you know, kind of an example of my lease ends October 15th. So the average buyer sees about five to seven homes before they find the one that they love. Negotiations can take a day or they can take several days. It just depends on how complex the transaction is. Closing takes about 30 days. Unlike rent, your mortgage payment is paid after the month. So you pay for October on November 1st. Whether you close, you'll pay interest for the remainder of the month at closing. Be sure to confirm with your lender when your first payment is due. 
but we can time it so you can close well before your lease ends and not leave you with two house payments. You can generally close even earlier if you paid your last month's rent up front. So this is kind of an example. Let's say September 15th, you close on the property to give you time to get the property ready and time for repairs. Or October 1st, let's say you close on the property, but this is going to give you less time to move or for delays. November 1st, your first mortgage payment is due. Perfect. Okay, so getting pre-approved. That is the most, the most important step before viewing homes, and we can't stress this enough. Yes. Um, in any market as a buyer, you want to get pre-approved by a lender, but especially in a competitive market. Getting pre-approved puts you in a stronger negotiating position with sellers and informs you of what you qualify for. So these are some of the things that you'll need. As far as gearing up for this finance-wise, you want to get connected with the lender to get pre-approved. And we have several um, reputable preferred lenders that we work with that we can refer over. You want to create a monthly budget, already get into that habit. Um, you know, you may qualify for 900000 However, the mortgage payment may be too high for your comfort level. So just because you qualify doesn't mean you have to use the full amount. You don't want to be house poor. Also, saving for a down payment and closing costs so that you can be ready to have the money to go alongside with your mortgage um, or what you are mortgaged, what you're pre-approved for. <clears throat> check credit score, sorry, check credit score and report and establish or maintain good credit. And we have reputable credit, uh, credit repair companies that we also can refer over to you. So as far as the documents that you're going to have to give to the lender when you seek out your pre-approval. So W-2s from the past year, if you are a W-2 employee, pay stubs from the, la from the past one to two months, proof of any supplemental income, a copy of your most um, recent tax returns, all schedules and pages. If you file separate business returns, you'll need both business and personal returns. So speaking to the self-employed or business owners, um, two most recent consecutive bank statements, all numbered pages, investment accounts, um, the statements for your investment accounts, statements from all your debts, and a copy of an unexpired photo ID, whether um, it's a driver's license or um, state ID or passport, I believe as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great information. So this here is, um, you know, I'm sure you've heard the words, oh, I've been pre-approved or I've been pre-qualified. There is a difference. So we are going to share with you what that difference is. So pre-qualification is, you know, the lender is telling you, well, you can spend about $900,000, but a pre-qualification is a lender's estimate of the loan amount you can borrow. Getting pre-qualified, it's a super quick assessment by a lender of the buyer's financial situation based solely off of what a buyer tells a lender, and it's not supported by any proof or verification. Now, a pre-approval, this is where it gets real. So you're approved for an $850,000 home loan. A pre-approval is a written lender commitment to grant a max home loan amount. Getting pre-approved requires the home buyer to fill out an application that allows a lender to determine their financial situation. So your debt to income ratio, your ability to repay and your credit worthiness. You want to get pre-approved <laughs> to know what you really are approved yes. for. So just to touch on that, you put some numbers, you go to Bank of America or some sort of lending tree or something and put in some numbers. That's not a pre-approval. <laughs> your, your information, your documents have not been verified. So you want to definitely go through the pre-approval process. We don't want, we want to stress that. Absolutely. Ooh. So, go ahead. I'll let you go ahead. Uh, okay. Talk about the interest rates. Okay. Oh, I want to you love that. interest rates. You love market. You love interest rates. I love data. It's amazing. She data. She's the data queen. <laughs> <laughs> so the difference your interest rate makes so here's a look at how rates will affect your monthly payment on that $900,000 home with a 10% down payment. So January of 2023, you know, looking at around a 6.09%. 
you are looking at a monthly mortgage payment of around $6,394. Let's say that interest rates, they go down. Maybe you're around like a 5.8% March of 2023. You're looking at roughly around 6,243. Now let's say next year, interest rates end up around 5.5%. You're now roughly around 5,938. So say all of this to say, I understand, you know, interest rates based upon this chart here, you are seeing the higher rates, but you can always refinance down the line. So let's say that you find the perfect home, but your only issue is these interest rates. You can always refinance. That is a beautiful thing about purchasing a home. Right. You want to date, the, you want to marry the home and okay. date the rate because who knows if you're going to find that perfect home exactly. down the line. Plus, we don't know. Rates might go up. They might go the other way as opposed to down. So you never want to try to time when the interest rates are going to go up or down. You kind of want to see if it makes sense for your situation. Then when you find the perfect home and then also see what, what is available to you at that time. As Nakia had mentioned, there's programs to be able to bring that rate down currently and then be able to refinance out of that at a later time if the rates do go down. So and I actually kind of want to touch on that, the three, two, one buy down. So let's just like say that you utilize the three, two, one buy down. And again, yes, there is a fee for the buy down, but we have been seeing sellers issue some type of credits to assist buyers with that buy down. There's ways, you know, of working through things. So let's just say that you do the three, two, one buy down and you have a 6.09%, but you get that discount of 3% for the first year. So just to give you an example, let me bring out my calculator. 900, Good old mortgage calculator. 10% down, and let's say a 3.09%. That monthly payment goes from 6,394 to $4,945. And so for that first year, you would have a 3% discount on your interest rate. So your rate would be 3.09% for year one. For year two, your interest rate would go up to 4.09% because you would have a 2% discount. And then for year three, your rate would go up to 5.09% because you would have a 1% discount. By year four, you would then have that 6.09%. But again, the goal is certainly to refinance. That is gold information. Yes. Oh, and you just oh, talked about that. Yeah. So <laughs> well, this, is, this is it right here. <laughs> so the three, two, one buy down. This is very popular right now. But again, it's just it's a program designed to help buyers receive a lower monthly mortgage payment. And as mentioned, there is a fee, but you will get that discount on your mortgage payment or on your interest rate. So again, for year one, you'll get that three percent discount. Your interest rate three point zero nine percent. Year two. You'll get a 2% discount. Interest rate is 4.09%. And then your three 1% discount, 5.09% interest rate. Nice. So some of the upfront costs to expect when you're buying a home. <clears throat> so the earnest money deposit, what that is, it's money placed into escrow upon acceptance of an offer, which shows the seller that you're serious with your offer. The earnest money also goes towards your down payment come closing Tide and closing title transfer. Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to read this to stay on point. Um, but no, it goes towards your down payment and your closing costs, title transfer. Um, the earnest money can be lost if the buyer decides to walk away completely for no valid reason after they have opened escrow with the seller and do not fulfill and perform requirements within the designated time frame, So we always like to stress that. And every time when we're working with the client, you know, we have everything in order to where we're check marking everything, you know, holding you guys' hand. And when it comes to having to release all contingencies, which puts your, your earnest money at risk, we make sure that you know that you can lose this money. <laughs> yes. No, you can lose this money. We are now releasing all contingencies. So if you want to back out for any reason, you are at risk of losing this money. <laughs> so we always stress that. 
but always that's, your, that. <laughs> yeah, that's, your, that's your hard-earned money but so the earnest money amount is completely up to you we just give our recommendation which out here in california it's typically anywhere between two to three percent of whatever the purchase price on mm -hmm. so we're giving our recommendations you know based on our experience and being in the market every day another upfront cost would be your down payment that's something that comes at the end of your escrow period. So if you're in escrow for 30 days on that 30th day, or I was, yeah, 20, on that 29, 30th day, um, you would need to have the money ready to wire over to escrow. So your lender will recommend a percentage of the sales price to be used as a down payment that's best for your financial situation. This can be as low as 3% and can go up to 20% and sometimes less and sometimes more. Another upfront cost while you are in escrow is your home inspection, paying for your home inspection. A general home inspection typically costs anywhere from 300 to 550, sometimes more, sometimes less. I wouldn't say less, but sometimes more dependent on the um, size of the home. You'll also have the option of buying additional inspections such as um, radon, well and septic, water, termite inspections, sewer, um, and other things of that sort. So these are things to be ready for. Um, going on, more upfront costs when buying a home, um, your closing costs. You are sometimes able to negotiate with the seller to pay your closing costs. If the seller decides not to pay, however, your costs may vary anywhere from 1% to 3% of the purchase price and sometimes more or sometimes less. Um, this does vary dependent on the location of the home, price of the home, and also the lender that you choose. If you would like more information before making an offer on a home, we can get an estimate of the amount of closing costs you would like to pay. Um, your closing costs are typically going to include the escrow account fees, the lender fees, homeowners insurance, um, lenders origination fees, and more, but those are the gist of what your closing costs are, compri closing costs are comprised of. Um, now, your home warranty. So it's usually best to negotiate where the seller is to pay for a home warranty. And that is, I would say, 95, 98% of the time, a seller will pay for the home warranty. But for whatever reason, if the seller declines to pay for a home warranty, you may purchase one yourself, which usually starts around $399. Everyone uses a, different, um, uses a home differently, which is why we strongly suggest buying a home warranty. So for example, say there's only one current individual seller living in the residence now, and they take one shower a day. Your family of five moves in and taking one shower a day, totaling five a day, your hot water tank is now being used much more frequently and differently than the last owner. So um, home warranty is going to cover things such as your, pretty much your appliances, appliances, water heater. Sometimes you can get some limited um, warranty on your roof. Um, plumbing. So there's different things. So if those items go out, this home warranty company typically will come out to either repair it or replace it um, for a very, very, very minimal fee, as opposed to having to replace it and paying a large premium for it. So when you do work with the Riddell Group, however, this is not an upfront cost because if it's not paid by the seller, it's typically gifted by us. So that's something to keep keep in mind we like to do that but um okay so appraisal is also something you'll have to pay for and this is something your lender requires to fund your loan and it can range anywhere between 300 to 800 dependent on the size of the loan good info so it is about buying a lifestyle community and more we understand that purchasing a home there's a lot of thought that goes into it. So, you know, we think it's important for you to just sit on this. You know, why have you decided to buy a home? Um, that why is very big because we feel that that why is going to be that motivation to keep you going throughout this race, this journey. So where do you see yourself in the next six months? You're driving home from work to your home. How do you envision your neighborhood? What's your time frame? Where are you living now? What do you love about where you live? What do you dislike about where you live? Is this going to be your forever home or do you plan on being here a few years and then upgrading? So some things for you to just think about. These are real questions. These are life-changing questions. Absolutely. And then again, just determining your needs. You know, some people, I, I feel it's, we feel it's very important to focus on your needs. 
and, you know, not the wants as much, you know, focus on what you cannot live without. So your needs, you know, it may be a good school district. Maybe it's having a two car garage or having, you know, a two car detached garage, um, having a spacious kitchen, a large backyard. So it's very important to just be very intentional in regards to what it is that you need in a home. And then, you know, obviously for extras, you know, your wants, wanting to have a large laundry room, an office den, having a pool, large closets or hardwood floors. So really, really focus on those questions um, and determine, determine what it is that you need in a home. Which by the way, hardwood floors, a lot of times these homes with carpet have really good hardwood right underneath it. <laughs> we've come to find point. out. That was a really good point. Absolutely. Yeah, we've come to find out. Okay. Um, your home search. You want to actually go through this? Sure, I can definitely. So these are just some, we want you to proceed with caution when it comes to um, dealing with, you know, open houses. So only about two and a half of buyers buy an open house they see. So when you go to an open house, the agents working in the open house, they're looking to obviously, you know, um, hold the home open. It may be one of their listings, but they're trying to collect leads. And so the agents are going to use, the, uh, like I just said, the open houses to collect leads and add you to their follow-up campaigns. So make sure that you're signing in with your agent's info instead of your own. And then you may come across a for sale by owner. So the for sale by owners, they generally list their homes for sale to get the most money. And oftentimes the home is overpriced. So, you know, they also, they don't know how to negotiate the transaction. So it could get messy without having an intermediary. And then when it comes to new constructions, we cannot stress this enough. New constructions, you know, they are helping to create more inventory, but they will generally have their own versions of the contract, their own lenders, their own title company. So make sure that you have an agent protect your best interest. Um, far too often, you know, we've heard of buyers who have gone to the new construction site and then the builder's rep, who's the agent there who represents the builder, ends up representing that buyer. So at the end of the day, the builder's rep has the builder's interest, their best interest. So you want to make sure, again, that you have someone who is representing your best interest at the new construction site. And make sure if you do go to a new construction site, you have your agent there, especially for the first visit. Because if your agent is not there for the first visit, they obviously can't help with asking the right questions, getting all the pertinent details and information, but they also most likely will not be compensated if you do decide to proceed with um, moving forward with that property. So. We gave away our secret in the first one though. Oh God. <laughs> We're the open house queens. I know, we are, we are. No, but it's good to know, it's good to know, especially if we're representing you, okay. you know, you wanna make sure, and our clients do, they put down our information. So we're very we loyal. appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> and we appreciate when someone already has a client as well, we, we make sure and then, um, that we respect that they, you know, that they have an agent. I can do this one too. Okay. So again, um, when it comes to your home search, once we have identified your criteria, the home search begins. We've identified those needs and we are ready to go. We know what you've been pre-approved for. It's time to go. So active listings. Our technology allows you access to all properties that are for sale by a brokerage or agent in the area and any available open houses. We also, um, because of the relationships that we've established, we do come across off-market listings um, as well. That include motivated sellers who sometimes don't want their home publicly advertised. Sometimes sellers of off-market listings can be a bit unrealistic and want more for, for, um, for what their home is worth. And then again, for sale by owners, we do have access to homes that are being sold by the owner. But as mentioned, you know, we do want to proceed with caution as most homes do not sell because they are way overpriced. These sellers are oftentimes very unrealistic. So what happens? We will get you set up with your own customer portal and um, you will begin to receive properties via email that fit your criteria. So please note, the less criteria that we add, the more available properties you will receive. 
So like the basic criteria such as max purchase price, bedrooms, bathrooms, no HOA, you know, we'll definitely include that, but we do advise, you know, whether it, it, it might be a two story home and you're wanting us to be very specific with that. So we can include that, but sometimes when agents are um, setting up their listings in the MLS, they may have a one story home, but they may mark it as a two story home. Or let me actually say, they may have a two story listing that they're trying to sell, but it's marked as a one story. Um, so if you prefer no HOA, um, our standard, we advise, ooh, if you prefer no HOA, then we advise to add that into the portal. So for example, I'm a little confused by that. Oh, so I get what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, um, so pretty much, you know, if something that's a little more standard is like a no HOA, because most likely the agent's going to mark that correctly. Um, however, if you're looking for something like a modern kitchen, we don't advise putting that into your portal, portal because it's not going to make as many homes available. Yes. Um, sometimes agents just don't even fill out everything. So if they're not filling out everything, but there might be a home, but their, their listings might have this gorgeous modern, you know, chef's kitchen. You're going to, if we put that into your portal, it's going to be bypassed because you're looking specifically for, for a modern kitchen. So we obviously we're doing, oh, as, as we go right here, we're also doing our own personal searches and um, putting the word out to the brokerage, to our brokerage, our agent relationships and, um, and more going beyond just to find the home that you desire. Um, so we are looking for those specific things, which is why we have that conversation with you on what your wants, your needs, um, all of that is. But as far as your portal, we do prefer for it to be more basic so that you see everything that's within your basic criteria going out to you. And you tell us what you see and what you like, as well as us working as a team. And on our end, we're also knowing exactly what you want <laughs> and finding it for you as well. <laughs> yeah, what's great with the portal is that you are able um, to send us notes. And you know, we're also able to see how frequently you're looking at a home. So if it's like intriguing to you, we're able to see that as well. Okay. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, so once you're at your home showing, so these are some things that you can look for when you're looking at homes and we're doing the, the, um, the property tours. So the flow, you know, does the floor plan flow? Is it somewhere you can grow or is there room to grow? These are always things that are great. Obviously, that's a value add. What about storage? Is there space for storage? Um, how does the neighborhood show? You know, when you're driving through, is it somewhere you can see yourself maybe taking a jog? And pro, was it priced by a pro, right? Um, we're doing our due diligence on our end and we're giving you our price opinions as well. But, you know, was it priced by a pro? <laughs> but no, these are some things that you can, can consider when you are going through the home search process. All right. This is big. Like, this is major. Oh, yeah. This, this <laughs> like, line you want to pay attention we, to. We have heard horror stories. So luckily, like, our clients, because they're educated on what not to do before closing on a home, but we have had some very crazy stories that we've heard you know, where unfortunately client decides to go buy a new car before closing on their home, you know, so they got pre-approved, they didn't have that debt on there, but they decided to go apply for that new car. They got approved. They now have that debt. So what not to do before closing on your home? Please, please, please don't do this. So don't change jobs, become self-employed or Quit your current job. Do not buy a car, boat, truck, RV, etc. Do not use your credit cards excessively or miss any payments. Do not transfer balances or open new credit cards. Don't spend money set aside for your closing costs. Do not co-sign any loans for anyone. Don't change banking accounts. Don't make any inquiries to your credit. 
please leave your credit alone and consult with your lender before making any changes. You want to approach buying a home from a place of financial stability. Yes, yeah, so no sneezing, nothing. Yes, not at all. <laughs> After you close though, go so crazy. Go get that new car, go get that ring. Do what you want to do. Go crazy, but just, uh, yeah. Go live. It's kind of like, <laughs> Red light, green light. We're on red light for 30 yes. days. Okay. <laughs> okay. I love it. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, so master due diligence when shopping for a home. Oh, these are, let me see. Hold on. Oh, oops. Can you see these? I can't know. You know what they say? You're so funny. <laughs> You're going to get realness from us. Sophie. I know you really are. Um, I do not, but we'll just master this. We'll just master it. So master due diligence when home shopping. So um, recognize wear and tear versus material defects. We are looking for issues with the roof, AC, plumbing, electrical, and structure. So older homes are more than likely going to have some issues. Um, we do like to say, though, focus on the safety issues. Um, you know, depending on how you negotiate the offer, ask for credits for material defects. But again, safety concerns that come up, oftentimes a lot of sellers are more understanding when it comes to issuing a credit for safety concerns. Now, sellers don't have to give any types of credits once that home inspection report comes back and you ask for um a credit to fix certain types of items. They don't have to. Um, you know, this is why we have our due diligence periods, like Natasha had mentioned earlier, our contingency periods. And then you want to make sure that during your due diligence time period that you hire a home inspector, a sewer inspector, as mentioned, and any other inspectors needed. This is key. And we do have, again, a certain time frame to handle our due diligence periods. Okay, sorry. Dealing with, we're trying to close this property right now and I'm getting a million text messages in reference to closing. So, <laughs> sorry guys, <laughs> let's see. Okay, different ways to hold title. So what is title? We hear this thrown around all the time, changing title. So another word for ownership in real estate is title. So when you purchase a home, title, which is ownership, will change over to you. There's different ways to vest and hold title of your home. You will select this during the escrow process, and this question will be on your paperwork from the escrow company. So the various ways to hold title are tenancy in common, joint tenancy, community property, and community property with right of survivorship. Your CPA can give you advice on the best ways to hold title. And we also have a sheet that breaks this down a little more on what each one is in our um, buyer's education toolbox. So you'll get that as well. Um, so this is the new construction. As mentioned, um, if you do decide that you want to view new construction homes, please, again, uh, we clearly can't stress this enough because we've mentioned it two times already. Um, so just always inform us so that we can set up the appointment so we can be present for the showings and ask the right questions. Because again, we just want to have your best interest. Um, agents at the home site, they work for the builder and they have the builder's best interest. So again, if your agent is not present at that first visit, they more than often will not be compensated. So New construction properties generally have their own versions of the contract, their lenders, their title company. So make sure you have your agent present. Yes, that's so important. So I know you're driving by this beautiful community, mm, mm, mm. but please call your agent first before you go to work. <laughs> please let the church say amen. Yes, let them say amen. Okay, so um, the home buying process. So. Let's go from start to finish. Can I put this up here? There we go. So first you're gonna meet with your realtor. Hopefully that's us. For your buyer's consultation, hire your realtor, right? Um, you go and get pre-qualified immediately, obviously based on your time frame. but say you're ready to jump in the market now, let's go get pre-qualified or pre-approved by a lender. 
once we know what your buying power is, um, your realtor shows you the homes that fit within your criteria. Okay, we're shopping. We found a home that you love. So we make an offer on your home. And us as realtors, we're there to help negotiate the best terms for you. It's one of the reasons why you hire us. Okay, so let's say your contract's accepted. We did our, due we did our job. We got you an escrow. Um, we are now in, uh, sorry, your contract was <laughs> accepted. We're now going into escrow. So your earnest money deposit is then sent to the escrow company that we open escrow with. And they title, uh, preliminary title search happens so that we can see if there's any, anything wrong with, um, with the title or any encumbrances or any liens or anything of that sort, because we want to be able to deliver a clear title over to you. Um, then the buyer's due diligence starts. So we have inspections and reports. I would say the first 10 days are really super, super busy for you as a buyer. Um, your inspections are like we had said, it's gonna be anywhere from like your home inspection, maybe termite inspection, roof, pool, um, sewer, um, you know, whatever it is that you need an inspection for. Typically it's usually just a home, uh, general home and um, termite yeah. and then maybe sewer. But if you need anything else, then, you know, obviously we're gonna recommend that you make the decision whether you wanna get the inspection or not. But we also help you review the inspections. And if there's any issues that are, <clears throat> I would say safety concerns or health hazards, um, we will negotiate the appropriate request. Um, also the reports you're gonna receive during this time are the seller's disclosures, everything they know about the property, um, as well as some California, general California disclosures. Um, the preliminary title report, which as I mentioned before, is going to show you what is on the actual title of the home. So any liens or encumbrances or just the general history of the title of ownership, you're gonna see all of that. Um, also, if it's an HOA, if there is an HOA there, you'll get the HOA disclosures, the CCNRs, um, also the NHD, which is the natural hazard, natural hazard disclosure, which shows you about the land, it gives you a little more insight on the land that the property actually sits on, as well as what the tax records are. Um, and then, like I said, as realtors, we help you review. And um, if there's any issues, we will, you know, negotiate as, as appropriate. Simultaneously, your loan approval process is happening. So um, managed company underwriting. Okay, so your lender is going through the underwriting process, right? So they're going through all your documents, everything that you've given over to them to let them know what's happening. Um, the appraisal is also ordered at the same time. And that's pretty much going to show them what the property is valued at so that they can um, lend you the appropriate amount of money. Um, let's just say, da, 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 oh, if you reject. So we this typically doesn't happen. Usually the lenders that we have worked with uh, mm -hmm. or that we have worked with, the ones that we, prefer or refer over, we're getting the due diligence done in the first, you know, the first half of things so that we don't get a rejection while we're in, um, in escrow. But say that you, there is some sort of rejection that happens after it's gone through underwriting, then we have to put you with another lender, or maybe there's some things that need to be worked on um, to where we have to try this process later, but we have never come across that yet, but it is, it's like a 1% chance. Um, of something that can happen. But after you go through the underwriting and appraisal process, then you get your full loan approval. Um, also the buyer secures homeowner's insurance simultaneously. Then the escrow company, it, they pay off and collect any um, information that's needed, anything that needs to be paid off that maybe the seller has, say that there was a lien that needed to be paid off, they're gonna go ahead and Take care of that. Um, the buyer conducts their final walkthrough. That's typically three to five days before the close of escrow. Um, also the signing of documents by both the seller and buyer happen to be able to close this. You're typically gonna sign documents um, like maybe a day or two before they fund the loan. And um, that's typically done with, an, or is, it's done with a notary, either a notary is sent out to you or you would go to the escrow company and they would have a notary meet you there. 
Um, the signed documents are then sent back to your lender. And after approval of all the signed documents, the lender then wires the funds and gives the okay for us to record. Recording happens the very, in Los Angeles County, the, the recording happens the next day. Uh, and it, they're sent back to escrow company to distribute funds. And okay, so this is stuff that happens in the all kind of simultaneously. So pretty much after your loan funds, the very next day in LA County and in Orange County it can be same day, your the title is switched over. This all happens at the county recorder's office. So title changes, ownership changes, and you are now the homeowner of your new home. <laughs> So redundant. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes, you are the new homeowner of the property that you loved. Um, you're given the keys and title policy deed. All of that is sent over to you and you can frame it, do whatever you want with it, but it's your home. <laughs> hey, congratulations. Congratulations. The home buying process. Hey. It's that simple hey. when we're holding your hand. Absolutely. <laughs> is that it? Oh, good. Oh no. Okay. No. <laughs> so, it with it. Okay. No. So making an offer. Now, what you offer on a property, it depends on a number of factors, the home's condition, the length of time on market, the buyer activity, and the urgency of the seller. So we advise um, what we feel will get the offer accepted. However, ultimately, you are the decision maker. So if you truly want the home and we are in a competitive market, it's best to be as competitive, aggressive as possible with the offer. So the offer package consists of the offer, which is the residential purchase agreement, your proof of funds, the pre-approval letter, and then, I mean, some buyers like to offer a personal letter to the seller. So if you can be flexible on the possession date, that often is enticing to sellers depending on their needs. So in our offer, we have contingencies slash your buyer due diligence periods. You have a specific time period to complete your buyer due diligence before you have to sign off. The three contingencies slash buyer due diligence, investigation, the, the appraisal, as well as the loan. Um, and so the, the I'm so I'm sorry, y'all, the default time frame in the offer for investigation, appraisal, and loan is 17 days. In a competitive market, we advise to shorten the contingency to make your offer more appealing to the seller. So Sometimes the seller plans on leaving major appliances in the home. However, which items stay or go is often a matter of negotiation. Typically, you will not be present at the, at the offer presentation. We will present it to the listing agent and, this, or, and or the seller. The seller will do one of the following. Accept the offer, reject the offer, counter the offer with changes. By far, most common is the counter offer. In these cases, our experience in negotiating skills become powerful in representing your best interest. When a counter offer is presented, you and I will work together to review each specific area of it, making sure that we move forward with your goals in mind and ensuring that we negotiate the best possible price and terms on your behalf. Nice. So opening escrow, and this is typically a 30-day process. However, closing sooner as possible as long as all parties are in agreement. So once we open escrow, your EMD will be deposited to escrow within one to three business days. The time frame depends on whatever the contract states. So um, always contact the escrow company to verify the escrow account number with your escrow officer before wiring. Um, you'll be introduced to our transaction coordinator who will be sending you over many disclosures and documents to sign throughout the escrow process. And we will send you over the, the seller's disclosures via PDF before so that you can take a look at it um, when we receive them from the listing agent to allow you to go through everything prior to you signing. So as I mentioned before, the, the first 10 days of the transaction um, and I would say the last five days of the transaction are extremely busy with home inspections, investigations, requests for repairs, negotiations, working with the lender, and final walkthrough, and, and could be more. All right, so closing one-on-one. -on -one. Closing day marks the end of your home buying process and the beginning of your new life. Congrats. So once we get the official clear to close from the lender, we will then remove the final contingency, which is the buyer due diligence um, 
which is the loan contingency. The lender will send over the loan documents for your review. Once you've signed off on everything, then the loan documents will be sent to the escrow officer. Escrow will then set up signing with the notary for final signing. After review, the loan will fund, then closing recording will happen a day after. Once your home transfers title, we will be notified by escrow and, and congratulations. You are now a new homeowner. You'll receive the deed at a later date in the mail. And again, as mentioned, the deed shows you as the new owner of the property. Woohoo! So find a house you love. Remove all the might, could, possibly, by connecting with the lender now so you don't have to wonder. You know, you'd hate to, I, I know a lot of times people, they just kind of go into this like, oh yeah, I want to buy a house, but it's finding out exactly what your purchasing power is that gives you the empowerment to take the leap. So you'll never know what you qualify for unless you connect with the lender. Um, lenders can't sell you anything until you find a home you love. Don't keep holding off until you feel you're ready, right? You might not even know you're ready until you see what you qualify for. Um, so just, yeah, just don't do it. Take the first steps towards home ownership. It's actually beautiful. It is. You can attest to it. Holding, we, we, being able to see our clients go from maybe not knowing, um, cause we work with everyone from first time home buyers to, uh, people who have purchased 10, 20, 30 properties. I mean, we have a, a wide range of buyers. Um, so it's just about, you know, when we see our first time home buyers, when they didn't know, and they like the joy on their face, when they get to the end of the finish line, it's just, it's so amazing so take the first step just see what you could get pre-approved for and what's so beautiful too is like those buyers who purchased years ago first-time buyers and now they have so much equity in their homes and they could use that equity to you know purchase another home or use it for um starting a business whatever the case may be but you got to start so what's next? Next I next up would be to book your consultation with us, um, complete the buyer intake form and upload your pre-approval. So go through the process with the, um, the lender, whether you have your own or like we had mentioned, we have preferred um, lenders that we use as well that we can connect you with. Um, attend your consultation with any decision makers, right? So if it's if you and your significant other are purchasing together, we need to do the consultation together um, with the both of you. Um, we'll review your intake form, set up your property search, and start your shopping time frame. We also have what's called a buyer's agreement um, just to ensure that you know, what, what we, we give 110, I would say a thousand percent. If you talk oh. to our clients, all of our clients are repeat clients because they love the way that we work. We are very, um, we're hardworking. Um, and we just ask for the loyalty back because we want to be able to continue to give a thousand percent of our energy, of our resource, of our relationships. Um, we want to continue to be able to do that. So in order to um, do that, we want to make sure that there's some sort of loyalty at the end. So we're just, we're working as a team collectively. Absolutely. I think that's actually the next slide. <laughs> it, okay. <laughs> there we go. I mean, it's a VIP yeah. agreement, right? Because it's yeah. when you're working with us, it's VIP. <laughs> that's really what it is. So she already tapped on that, but our job is definitely to give you enough information to feel confident and comfortable that you're making a great decision to buy a home. So Let's get to work. Let's do it. We're super yes. excited. And also, we didn't service. really touch on this in here, but if you need to sell a home and buy a home, we do a lot of transactions that way as well. So we can talk a little more on an individualized basis if that is your situation. Absolutely. But thank you guys for tuning in. We hope this was um, a value to you and we look forward to working with you. I guess. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And we'll be in touch. Okay. Did you, did you stop recording? No. <laughs> okay, yeah, so this is cheers to servicing 50 plus families for 2023. We are super excited. We hope yeah. that you found a lot and of we value. Want you, we want you to be one. So. Absolutely. And we hope that you found a lot of value in this. And also that you share us, share this with others as well, because people really want the education and they need the education. So yes. All right. Have a blessed day, everyone. Bye-bye.